Welcome to the journey. In these days of lockdown, we are all on a journey together, a journey in solidarity. Just last week, I read a report in the New York Times about the COVID-19 situation in Italy. And after I'd finished reading that, I felt fearful and disorientated. I really wondered where it is all going. And then I began to think about South Africa and more fear gripped me. So many people live in informal settlements. Other people have to queue for their social grant. And I wondered what would happen. And as I lived with that, I began to ask myself the question, why does a good God allow suffering? Why, when we have such deep faith, is God allowing this to happen? This, of course, is the timeless question that believers have asked whenever they face tragedy. Why does a loving God allow suffering? I then began to think about the Gospels, and I wondered if I could find a place where Jesus gives some explanation to us as to why we suffer. And I couldn't find a single place. I don't remember a place where Jesus gives us an explanation. And then I began to think about Jesus himself, especially in this time of Lent. And what does the Gospels tell us about him? It struck me that maybe the place to start is the very fate of Jesus himself. And two things became strikingly clear to me. The first one is Jesus suffers. He suffers because of the tilted structures of life. He suffers because of the bad decisions that his contemporaries make. Whatever we make of that, the Gospels present us with a God in Jesus who in his very person feels pain and suffering and loss. And then there was something else that struck me, that the suffering of Jesus is a redeeming suffering. He does not escape suffering, but through suffering, Jesus redeems. His suffering does not rescue us, but his suffering redeems us. And then I thought about last Sunday's Gospel, the story of Jesus raising Lazarus, and that tells us so much about suffering. Notice that when Jesus hears that Lazarus is sick, he does not go straight away. He waits for Lazarus to die. Lazarus suffered death. His sisters, Mary and Martha, suffer grief. They even ask Jesus the painful question that we ask, where were you? Why didn't you come? Why did you wait so long? Why did you allow this to happen? Jesus doesn't answer their question. He simply asks them a question, where have you put him? And they agree to show him and they take him to the tomb. And it's at that moment when he reaches the tomb that Jesus enters into their grief. We are told that Jesus weeps. He shares their grief. Only after entering into sharing their grief does he raise Lazarus from the dead. You see, Jesus too doesn't escape suffering, pain and the grief of loss. So we could ask ourselves, where is God as we face COVID-19? The good news is that God is with us where we are. God weeps with us. God enters into our fear and our anxiety. God shares the suffering of those who are sick. God feels the grief of those who have lost loved ones. God is with us, not in a flashy or powerful way, which is what we so often desire, but God enters into and shares our painful feelings. The good news is that God will redeem us too. Nobody that is fearful or anxious or suffering or dying or grieving the loss of a loved one will not be redeemed. That 
is where we place our hope, friends. That is where we find our true consolation. At this time, more than ever, we are perhaps invited to hang on to the words of the great Julian of Norwich, who lived in the 14th century in the time of the Black Death. And she heard the Lord saying to her, All will be well, all will be well, all manner of things will be well. Let's ask the Lord today to help us to hear that voice, all will be well.